One of the most powerful spells that has been cast on us is the slave morality mindset that dominates our current culture. That we should forgive our enemies, that we should love everybody equally, that we should turn the other cheek. This has been transplanted onto our consciousness from a very young age and cultivated within us for a specific reason of control. As soon as we're old enough to walk and talk, we are shipped off to the longhouse in order to be indoctrinated into the slave morality Weltenschwung. Meanwhile, those who are the spell casters cultivate a master morality for themselves one that is rooted in strength and will to power. Meanwhile, the virtues that we cultivate are submission, obedience, humility, self-sacrifice to society that doesn't actually care for us. And so there is a dynamic of might for me, slave morality for thee. And this has been going on for a very long time. And we can see this play out in, in certain dynamics within the media. And they tell us that this is what they're doing because, of course, they always tell us what they're doing. That is what they must do in order to dispel any negative karmic consequence. And one of the most obvious examples of them telling us they're doing this is in Conan the Barbarian. Balsa Doom is a powerful occultist, a black magician. He surrounds himself with powerful and mighty mercenaries. And through these mercenaries, he runs a, a cult. But the ontology of the cult, their Weltenschwung, is much different from Balsa's own. Now, Doom has his own will to power, where he explores the very substrata of reality and tries to empower himself through his invocation and merging with the deity set. Meanwhile, his followers resemble something that we've seen in our own world, the hippie movement. They're pacifists, they're weak, they believe that Tulsa is a loving benevolent man who only wants us to become ascended to a higher vibration. They lay down their arms and become vegan, vegetarian. Now as you move up the hierarchy of Doom's cult, you have the priests, still weaker than his upper echelon of mighty barbarian mercenaries, the priests, the hypocrites as they are, use their power to sexually coerce the lower members of the cult. And even above the priests, you have the Kisitra of the cult, the fighters, who can dominate the priests at will and take what they want and fight and kill without the guilt that has been cultivated in the hylix of the lower levels of the cult. And then at the top you have Pulsa Doom himself who cultivates both might and magic in order to dominate all under his reign. So the hylix at the bottom, the cult followers, they are the New Agers, they are the hippies, they are the pacifists within the Abrahamic aspect that has been psyoped into them. They are giving their energy, their own will, their own power to a, a man who has brainwashed them through magic, through spellcraft, to be his slaves. He cultivates the slave morality within them while sharpening his sword and his wand. 
And through this, he achieves real power. He says it himself. Real power comes from commanding with the word, not through just sheer steel. Now, Conan, though not a dark occultist, has his own master morality. He's not like the New Age hippies who follow the snake cult of doom. He's a man of action, unshackled by the restraints of societal norms. He continues to struggle against those who would impose their will upon him. He is Nietzsche's Ubermensch. He rejects control. He has a disdain for kingships, priests, and magic mirrors. External authority he does not submit to. So that has how the dynamic plays out between Doom and Conan. But there's modern parallels within this as well. We see it within the, the Catholic Church. It's a, it's a mirror of the exact same parallel. Those at the top cultivating black magic and power... We have the Vatican with their walled off vaults of knowledge that we do not have access to. Which probably has the, the real knowledge of the pre-slave morality Christianity. The real Christianity that was uh, completely stamped out. The Germanic tribes, after kicking around the Christian Romans for a couple centuries, didn't just convert to... Christianity because it was politically convenient. That narrative makes zero sense. There was an aspect to what happened back then that has been completely hidden and we don't know because it's been completely and utterly stamped out to the point where we can't even research the actual alternative possibilities because it's locked up in the Vatican. So we don't we just don't know. But the uh, Germanic tribes who were thrashing the Romans after a couple centuries, sacking Rome, they didn't just um, convert to Christianity out of the goodness of their hearts. They didn't just adopt the modern Protestant Catholic slave morality that has dominated the church for the past 500 years. Out of their out of co political convenience, as we are being told by uh, people, the priests, of course, they teach um, submission and righteousness, and then the dark recesses they're abusing their power. Same with uh, corporations, people at the top. They you know they put on the happy face, they put on the nice smiles. They want to uh, use. Rhetoric like sustainability, diversity, inclusion, but then in the meantime, they're completely exploiting their workers. Overworking employees, suppressing unions, and their bonuses continue to go up while they, they use the spellcraft to show that they have a good heart. You know, the wagey dance... The wagey dance is the ultimate expression of slave morality. It's a humiliation ritual imposed upon the workers in order for them to submit. Once you engage in the wagey dance, you're casting a spell on yourself and you're energetically bending the knee to your corporate overlords. And so the, the wagey rituals that are starting to dominate the workplace will become more and more prevalent as they need to cast more control over their workers as people become more and more suspect of the entire corporate world in general and the corporate work culture in general. It really is an ultimate example of this. Corporations love to use philanthropy as a means of control, but this is often used to enhance their influence rather than actually address systematic issues. The media, of course, they are massively involved in might for me, slave morality for the a lot of the Hollywood spells of the cast. 
often portray meek guys, goofy guys, oofy doofy types who just go along to get along and, and through their, their good heart and their righteousness within the uh, so-called righteousness within the moral frame of modern society. They, they get the girl. You know, they get the girl, they get the, the prom they get the promotions, they get the happy ending, and they ride off into the sunset after but just, you know, staying true to their slave morality selves. I talked a lot about this in my uh, Scott Pilgrim video. Where um, I mean Scott Pilgrim is the ultimate slave. So that's just one example. I mean, it's pretty much every movie and what what is the the end of of every movie love overcomes all just a very ambiguous doctrine of love overcoming all and um no actual real wit wisdom being accumulated from the arc of the story not all media some media like conan teaches you another aspect i i know i come back to the story a lot but it is a gem a wellspring of knowledge and it's dune there are going to be some spoilers here, but in book four, Paul Atreides' son, Leto II, ascends his human form and becomes the worm god emperor. He's a worm god. And the worm god has a lot of insights into humanity because he's lived a million lifetimes within his own uh, blood memory. And he lays out an interesting concept called breeders and screeners within the dynamics of society. So there's the breeders and the screeners. The breeders are the men who get to stay within the palace and the inner circle of society. They get to laze around like lions, essentially, and enjoy their breeding rights. But then there's a screener class of men. Men who are forced to be in the military or other expendable jobs. They are the excess men. And the excess men are given the, the most dangerous jobs. They are meant to be sacrificed for the betterment and for the continuation of society. And what the worm does is he inundates these men with slave morality from the very beginning of life in order for them to more easily accept their fate. And the worm explains that this dynamic has been going back all the way to the beginning of human society, that what armies were was the grouping of the excess men and sending them out to screen for their society so that they could thin out this herd of excess men in order for society not to be overburdened with a unfavorable male to female ratio. So these screeners were were sent out and basically meant to to die. They they were taught slave morality from the very beginning of their lives in order for them to fill their role. While the breeders who are given their master morality, lounge back at the, the home. You know, they're given guard duty or they're given some sort of role that ties them to the city states or the tribe. So this dynamic is really, it's all pervading. You see it in politics as well, right? They tell us about austerity. We got to tighten our belts. Reduce the public spending. Meanwhile, at the same time, they're hoarding their own wealth. They're telling us, you know, you can't, uh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But in the meantime, they're breaking all the taboos and doing the eyes wide shut parties at night, imposing strict surveillance on us. Meanwhile, we don't know what they're up to. We can't get any transparency on where our tax money goes. It's all shielded and classified, and we don't actually know 
what kind of technology or what kind of operations they're doing. Again, it goes back to the breeders and screeders dynamic. They warmonger, they storm crow, and in the meanwhile, they never go out and fight in the, the trenches. Very, very rarely does a king these days go out and fight in the trench. I don't think it's even happened within the last hundred years. Maybe the last time was the Belgian king in World War I. So the vast majority of these people are living comfortably while preaching austerity and sacrifice to the slave class. And this is why the New Age is so dangerous because once you have your awakening and you realize you're living in some sort of matrix these new agers are waiting for you and they will cast their slave morality spell onto you because they needed to update their slave morality ethos christianity wasn't cutting it anymore there's too many things that Christianity has that doesn't quite fit in with the cause so they're developed new age as the slave morality 2.0 and now you have new age everywhere and it's becoming the dominant ethos within Gen Z and what the new age teaches you is that of course you know everyone is the same love everyone equally we're all one consciousness and you should never judge or hate or have any negative emotions whatsoever that everything happens for a reason and it's all going to work out in the end no matter what don't do anything don't worry about action don't worry about cultivating the generative principle just sit back, relax, and let the good vibes roll. This goes all the way back to the hippie movement, and there was kind of the inception of this mindset when there was a need to cultivate a new ideology. Of course, this is all control. This was all inseminated from the top down. The hippie movement was a CIA-backed op. You can get into the dynamics of of why we'll, we'll get into that and a closer examination of that in a different video but rest assured this was done not organically it wasn't just a random awakening of consciousness we didn't just shift into a different astrological age this was implanted in people's minds for a very specific reason and that reason was to create a new ideology a no Tulsa Doom ideology, a new snake cult. While the worshippers of Set, like Doom, continue with their practices. Our so-called truth movement. What is the, the end the end conclusion always? It's uh, we're all one vibration. We're just having a human experience, mate. But we're, at the end of the day, it's all just a love vibration and we just need to tune in to this love frequency in order to defeat the New World Order. And of course, that's being implanted again. They, they have guards at all corners. There's agents in every room and in every nook and cranny of, of knowledge. They're, they have a backup plan, a contingency plan waiting for you, waiting to capture your mind. So even if you think that you have escaped and that you're a high level, a high vibration individual, you're probably falling into some sort of trap. So just be aware, be vigilant, and question the soothsayers. So Hyperboreans, what we need to do is just recognize the hypocrisy. The people... The spellcasters at the top, they want us to, to take the brunt of all the hardships of society while not incurring any of the actual rewards. So cultivate uh, this worldview of self-reliance 
and the courage to reject this false morality that's been indoctrinated into us. Recognize the manipulation. So understand how these ideologies are weaponized to enforce compliance to the breeder and screener slave morality dynamic. Find ways to live authentically and break free from this control mechanism. And always challenge the hypocrisy openly. Talk about what's going on. Raise the awareness of the false dynamics of society. The shroud of illusion that encompasses all of our reality. And do not fall for their spells. Break break it. Dispel it. Cultivate your own will to power and find what that actually means for you because it's not what you're told it is. You have to find that out for yourself.